All right, guys, so we're back with another video. So we're just going to continue from where we left off. And in this video, I'm going to go ahead and set up the database for our application. So you want to make sure you have MongoDB installed. OK, um, we're going to be using uh, Mongoose, which is an ORM that allows us to define schemas for our MongoDB database. Uh, so yeah, let's just install mongoose real quick npmi mongoose oops and that should appear in our dependencies in just a sec and there it is all right great so what we're going to do is um, we're going to go into source we're going to go into database and i'm going to create the database authentication Right now the connection, sorry. So we're gonna do const mongoose equals require mongoose. And we're gonna do mongoose.connect. And this is just gonna be a URI, so it's mongodb colon two forward slashes, and then I think it's localhost 27017. And then the, the name of the database. So we're just gonna create. We're gonna we're just gonna use um, Discord auth. And uh, yeah, I think new use new URL parser true, and then use. Okay, yeah, this should be fine. If you don't if you don't specify this uh, object here, it's gonna give you like a warning, which is pretty annoying. So that's why I have it here. And this is this returns a connection I think yep so I'm just gonna go ahead and export this so that's pretty much it literally just that's literally it uh, so now if I go into let's go over here const db equals require database database okay and um, we're gonna do db dot then actually yeah db dot then we'll just do console log connected connected to mongo db catch any errors okay so this should be good let's run our code again uh and yeah connect to mongodb so we're getting another warning use unified topology let's just set that real quick let's do yep there we go so great we're connected to our database which is awesome okay so um Let's go ahead and create a schema for our user. So pretty much a schema is just a structure on how our collection is gonna look like because MongoDB is made up of collections. Okay, and the collections have what's called documents. So for example, we want a collection of users. Okay, each user is gonna represent a single document in our MongoDB database. So we're gonna to need to create a model for that. So I'll just do source, we'll create a new folder called models. And I'm going to create a user model. We call this Discord user if we want. Okay, so let's do const mongoose equals require mongoose. All right. So there are a lot of things that we, there are a lot of uh, attributes that we can retrieve from the Discord user. Uh, I'm thinking we just need like the most basic ones. So we'll just do like the ID. Um, We'll do like the ID and the, um, I, I guess the username should be good enough for now. So let's do const user schema equals new mongoose.schema. And we're going to define our properties, our fields. So we're gonna do ID, we'll have this a string. Required. True. Well, I'm going to call this, sorry, I'm going to call this Discord ID. And then we're going to do username. 
true. Okay, we don't need a password field because when you're using OAuth 2, you don't need a password for that. So now we're going to do uh, module.exports, wait, whoops, const user equals module.exports equals mongoose.model user user schema. So we're going to compile out, we're, this is going to compile down the schema into like an actual model. And we're just uh, exporting this out. Okay, actually, I'm going to call this uh, user. Okay, and that's pretty much it. We can obviously go make, make things more complicated, like adding more fields and stuff, but we don't need to do that for now. So we're just going to go over to Discord strategy. We're going to go ahead and do const Discord user equals require uh, models Discord user. Okay, so let's do this. Um, we're going to go ahead and do a Discord user dot find one. And we're gonna go ahead and actually, first let me actually make this an async function. And we want to find one by the Discord ID. So we're gonna do Discord ID, profile.id, which is the ID of the Discord user. And this returns a promise. So we're gonna do const uh, user equals await, find one. Okay, and we don't need, yeah, we don't need to catch it. Well, actually, I'll use a try catch instead. I was doing dot catch. Okay. So if this user is found, uh, we're gonna say if user, we're gonna do done null user. And what this is gonna do is this is going to actually invoke the passport dot serialize user function. Okay, which is going to serialize the user and it's gonna attach that user's session into the request object. So don't worry, I'm gonna show you what that does in just one sec. Okay, but if the user is not found, okay, what we need to do is we need to return an error. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. If the user is found, good. If the user is not found, let's create them. So let's go ahead and create the user. So let's do, uh, let's see, um, const new user equals await discord user dot create. And we're gonna to need to follow our schema, otherwise it's gonna throw an error because we have both these fields as true. So we're gonna do discord ID, discord ID equals profile.id. And then we're gonna do username equals profile.username. All right, and then after that, we're gonna go ahead and do uh, const saved user. Well, actually I think we can just do, yeah, save user. So await new user new user dot save. Okay. And if at some point something goes wrong, it's going to throw an error. Okay. So once we have saved the user to the database, we're going to call done and we're going to just do null user or sorry, saved user. Okay. And down here in catch, we're going to go ahead and just, let's see, we're going to do done error and then null. Okay. So pretty much if an error is found, we're going to go ahead and call this function. Okay. I think we're good here. So we're just going to need to implement the two. Uh, we're going to need to implement the passport dot serialize user function and the passport dot um, the serialize user. So we're going to do passport serialize user. And this is just going to be taking a callback function. So we're looking at the docs over here and all this function is going to do is just serialize the user into a session so we can send it to the front end or it's going to basically just going to serialize it into the request, the, uh, the request object and we're going to have access to it. Okay. So we're going to do, uh, what was it again? User done. So we're going to do user done. Okay. And then passport dot deserialize user is going to, I think be, uh, the ID and done. Well, this is a little bit different. Okay, yeah, there we go. ID done. Okay. Okay, so now over here we can just do done. And we're going to do, uh, let's see, we're going to pass in user ID. And then we're going to go ahead and pass in, I guess, null for here. All right, so let me just show you what, what really goes on when we serialize the user. So first, let's just do this. Serializing. 
So if I console log the user, this is going to be our MongoDB instance. Okay, so before I'm not going to invoke done. Let's just let me just show you guys what this does. So let's go over here. Let's authorize. And let's look at what happens. So see how we're in serializing user function and we have the Discord ID. So what we need to do is we need to pass in into done. We need to pass in the ID of the user. So we have null and then we're going to do user Discord ID. Actually, wait, I'm sorry. Um, actually, give me one. So I'm trying to think about this real quick because if we find if we series the user, we can just actually use the. I mean, we could technically use the Discord ID for the uh, serialization, but we can actually just use their MongoDB ID instead, which I think would be a lot more safer. So we're gonna pass in user ID, okay? And then in the the serialization process, what we want to do is we want to check to see if the user exists in the database, and if they do. Uh, essentially, we're just going to go ahead and return error and done. So we're going to check to see if the user exists by their uh, Discord ID. So we're going to do Discord user find one Discord ID ID. Actually, wait a minute. Hold on. Well, actually, wait. I'm sorry. We're using. I'm sorry. We're using. Uh, mongo mongo object id so we got to do find by id instead sorry about that okay so if that's if that's good okay we're going to just actually let me do async we're going to do const user equals await and we're going to do if user uh done and i think it's null and then i think the user object itself is being sent and uh yeah that's pretty much it for there i think okay there we go all right so let's save and we should be good to go like our application should be good to go let's try this one more time so authorize and there we go look we've authorized ourselves. and notice how over here uh we're going all the way back to here now we're inside here we've authorized ourselves so now let me actually send the actually let me actually send the user so basically when you use the passport it's going to serialize your user into an in actual user object and it's going to attach it to the request object itself so let me actually do this again if i uh let me see something real quick notice how it's going to send me my credentials to the front end. Okay, so let's walk through this one more time. Okay, because we I know we've done a lot, but I want to make sure I walk through it so you guys understand what exactly is going on. Okay, so basically, what I'm doing here is I'm saying, hey, look, we want to find one user by the Discord ID. Okay, because we obviously don't want to find by MongoDB IDs, because every single time the user, you know, uh, re-authenticates themselves, it's going to create a new object. So we want to check to see if their Discord ID is already in our database. If it is, good, we're going to call done. This is going to serialize, uh, this should serialize the user, okay? And likewise over here, okay? So if we, if the user doesn't exist, it's going, we're going to create the user, and then we're going to call done, pass and null, and then save the user. Okay, so if at any point an error happens, we're going to call done and pass in an error and null for the user. So once that's the case, what happens next is we want to go through the serialized user and the serialized user process. So you notice how earlier when I did a console log, you can see that we saw serialization and then deserialization. Let me actually show you guys in the logs just how this works. So first, let me actually go into my MongoDB database and let me actually do this. I'm going to just put these logs out so you guys can see what's going on. Create user exists. Because I really want to make sure you guys understand the whole, like, you know, the life cycle of everything and how the whole thing works. User does not exist. Okay. So let's go into our MongoDB. So let's do show DBs. Let's do use uh, Discord auth, I think was what it's called, right? Show tables db.users.find pretty okay so let's just drop this database 
Oh, I'm sorry, not drop, but drop the collection. Okay, so now our Discord ID is not going to exist. So if I save and let's restart, yeah, restart application. Let's go ahead, auth. Okay, we're going to click authorize. We're good. Now let's watch this look. User does not exist. Okay, user does not exist. So we create one and look how in the database we go here, the user is back there again. Okay, and now after that, we serialize the user and then we send it to the front end. Okay, the deserialization user, the deserialization is important. Okay, and I highly suggest you read a little bit into it in when in the password JS documentation. But essentially, we just need the we just need it to serialize and deserialize users for uh, you know subsequent subsequent requests here and there. See how it says deser deserializing. Okay. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much how this whole thing works. So now that we are authenticated, what happens, what really happens is now we've created our user, we've logged in or we've logged in, right? So our user session, our user account that we just created, or if we just logged in, there is a session. So if we actually look in the console, well not console, but if we actually look at, uh, where is it, application? If we look at cookies, so notice how there's a cookie over here, right? Let's actually look at this. Notice how there's a cookie over here. This cookie, and notice how, look at the expert. I don't know if you guys can see this, but let me zoom in a little bit. So we have this cookie over here, right? Let me put this over here. Okay. Seems like I think it's, uh, it's definitely, yeah, it's encrypted. Okay, and we have this expiration date. And this expiration date is one day from now. Right, it's uh, let's see, it's 406. This is a UTC, so it's four hours ahead. We can see the expiration date is one day from now, okay? So that's pretty freaking awesome. All right, cool. So, what exactly does this mean now? So, what this means is we have successfully authenticated ourselves, so our session actually exists, okay? So, in the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to create like routes that you can use to you know determine whether or not the user is authenticated or not so hopefully this video made sense and i'll see you guys in the next one peace